They look like they're resisting change or dragging their feet, but are they simply quiet? If you want to read a really good non-fiction book that will make you think about your job and your life, read Susan Cain, C-A-I-N, Quiet. Quiet. It's a number one bestseller. It's about introverts. A third of you are introverts, very likely. If you aren't an introvert, you're probably married to an introvert. A third of your kids will be introverts, not cripplingly, chronically shy, not with obsessive compulsive disorder, not a case for psychiatric treatment, just quiet. Whenever I mention there's going to be an ice-breaking activity, you're the ones who have a little trail going through your head saying, oh my God, not one of those again. What are we going to have to do this time? If the trainers come in and say we're going to do trust exercises where we fall into each other's arms, you begin to cringe with embarrassment. You may be very confident with the kids in your class, but could be very shy with other adults around you. Introverts, by the way, often become the best leaders. They don't always see themselves as leaders. But introverts create space for other people's ideas to come forward because they're not filling up the space with their own ADD brilliance all the time. Introverts often make really, really good leaders. But we don't value introverts, say Susan Cain. We value extroverts. And so the teachers who are quiet, what we tend to do, teachers who are like this, who have got through the first three years or so, and they seem okay, the teachers who are quiet, we sort of leave them alone. We ignore them. They don't want to make a big whole school change. They don't want to be the leader of new technologies and how to use the iPads in the school. They don't want to be the, the champion for all the teachers in the school. But you ask them to work with two or three colleagues quietly, quietly, on something that is innovative and important. And they're more likely to do that, just as when they go to a party, they're likely to stand next to two or three people and talk all night rather than be the life and the soul who lights up the room. So quiet people you can engage with change, but differently than you engage the ones who are always in the first rush of, of change. And by the way, the change literature shows you, if, if you pick the people in the first rush of change, they're the least likely to be able to spread it to other people afterwards, because they're outliers within their group.